Each time you start to meditate, you should remind yourself that this is a very high level of work for the mind, an honorable level of work, a noble level of work. So put yourself in the mood to do something noble. You're not going to just sit here and follow your thoughts wherever they go. You're going to stand above and lift the mind up to a higher level. We're going to look at its thoughts and decide which ones are skillful, which ones are not, which ones should be encouraged and which ones should be discouraged. Remember, we're working in the noble truths here. What's noble about them? is that they lift the mind to a higher level. We look at suffering, we don't blame other people for it, we don't blame things outside. We take responsibility. That's a noble act right there. And then we look at the causes of suffering, we see that the things that we crave, the things that we desire the most, are often the things that cause us the most suffering. And so we're willing to call our cravings into question. That's also noble. But to do that, you first have to get the mind still, give it strength. That's why we practice concentration, focusing on the breath. Take some good long, deep in and out breaths. And if long breathing feels good, keep it up. If it doesn't feel good, you can change. Find a level of breathing, fast, slow, heavy, light, deep, shallow, that's just right. Because the breath is the most responsive of all the elements in the body. And it's one that colors our experience of the body as a whole, and it will color our experience of things outside, too. So you want to get the breath so that it's just right. And think of that sense of just right then spreading throughout the whole body. And then you try to protect it. In the protecting, you'll notice that other thoughts come into the mind. And if you can just let them go, fine. You don't have to pay them any mind. Think of, think of them as stray animals that are wandering around outside your house. The problem is sometimes some stray animals will come and they want to get some food from you, they want to get shelter from you. And you start feeling sorry for them. You feed them. And then they move in. In other words, sometimes the distractions take over. There's something about them that pulls you in. So this is where you have to use the Buddhist five steps for dealing with thoughts like that. The first step is to notice when do they arise? And what, when they arise, what causes them to arise? You're not just looking for or or arising, you're looking, <coughs> you're looking for origination. Which means, what is it in the mind that causes you to want to go out and look at that, take up that thought? And then watch for it to dissolve. Because these thoughts, if you don't feed them, they'll go away, like stray dogs, stray cats. If you don't feed them, they'll go away. What you want to do is see, why is it that you want to feed it? Look for the allure. That's the third step. What is it about these thoughts that you really like? Why do you like thinking about them? What is it that you find attractive? Either in the thought itself or just the fact that you are thinking this thought. Sometimes that as an attraction. You think you're clever because you're thinking the thought. But you ask yourself, is it really clever? Look at the drawbacks of the thought. If you keep on thinking this thought for a while, where will it lead you? When you see that it would lead you to some place that's not good, then it's a lot easier to let it go. You have to remember that the Buddha said that he got in it on the correct path when he was able to divide his thoughts into two types, skillful and unskillful, based on where they came from and where they led. The unskillful ones would come from mind states like sensuality, ill will, harmfulness. And they would lead to suffering. So instead of looking at the thought in terms of its content or whether you like it or not, the Buddha is recommending that you look at it in terms of where it's coming from, where it's going to go what it would cause you to do. And if you see that it caused you to do something unskillful, you've got to let it go. And his image is like a cowherd who beats the cows back to make sure they don't get into the rice fields when the rice is, and the grains are coming out on the rice plants. 
But then there are other thoughts that have nothing to do with sensuality. They're thoughts that come from an attitude of renunciation, trying to look for happiness in some place besides sensuality. Thoughts of goodwill, thoughts of compassion. Those thoughts, the Buddha said, you can kind of encourage. Let them wander as they like. Like a cowherd during the hot season, when the rice has all been harvested, there's no danger of eating anybody's rice, so the cows can wander around. You just have to keep mindful where they are. But then there's the problem that even good thinking, if you think for a whole day, can tire you out. When the mind is tired, it very easily goes back to unskillful thinking. So to protect your mind, that's why we need concentration. Staying with one object, so the mind can have a place to rest, gather its strength. So in this way, you're working both with concentration and with insight together. In a John Lee's image, it's like a person walking. You use both your left leg and your right leg. If you just hopped around on your right leg or hopped on your left leg, you wouldn't go very far. But you use your left leg, use your right leg, back and forth, back and forth. Stillness, insight, stillness, insight. Your insights will get sharper, the stillness will grow stronger. It's in this way that your practice develops in a balanced way. So even though discernment is what we're aiming at as our primary tool in the path, it needs to be supported by all the other elements of the path, and particularly supported by right concentration. So it can see clearly, because you're standing, you're standing still, basically, when your mind is in concentration. And when you're standing still, you can see things more clearly. And if you're doing delicate work, you can do it a lot more easily. You're not standing on something that's moving around all the time. And as the different defilements get peeled away, the, the stillness of the mind grows stronger. So it's in this way that both your concentration and your insight help each other along.